Speaking of tearing this country from the inside out and just destruction that the Democrat Party is doing, we got new inflation numbers here for our lead story of the day. And Joe Biden is once again breaking records, folks. It's as if every time I talk about this guy and we go over new statistics with him, he's just continually breaking records in a negative way. The guy can have his own Guinness Book of World Records book just for his time as being president of the United States in the first year and a half. So the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, came out. Are you guys sitting down for this number here? Because <laughs> it's so crazy to be using these types of numbers. It rose 9.1% between June of 2021 and June of 2022, meaning that inflation once again surpassed record highs. And it's not like this is coming from like a conservative uh, poll or statistics or Republican statistics. This is coming from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. And if that doesn't you know, make matters worse. Check this one out. So the most recent year over year inflation figure exceeds the Dow Jones estimate by 8.8%. Not even close. And we, we actually talked about this before, not just with the Dow Jones, but also the S&P 500 in terms of their predictions and estimates. And Joe Biden every single time has exceeded expectations in a negative way. Like the Dow Jones and S&P 500, like, hey, we'll give it a little leeway. We don't think it's going to reach this, but we'll give it a little bit of buffer here. There's no way in hell this guy is going to surpass us. And he just does it time and time again. Now, if you're unfamiliar, and some people are, in terms of what exactly inflation is, we've been talking a lot about this. I figured we should try to break this up and make sense of what the hell we're talking about here. So inflation just refers to the price change in the price level over a given period of time. And how CPI tracks this whole thing is they take a hypothetical basket of goods and services that represents the typical spending for an American household, and they run their calculation that way. And so over any period of time that they want to look at, they use those same, good, those same goods and services that a typical American household would spend on, and that's how they get that increase in inflation. So rises in the price level that outpaces rises in wages implies that Americans are spending a greater portion of their income on goods and services. And that's what we're seeing happen right now. Furthermore, between June of 2021 and June of 2022, the price of food increased 10.4%. Make sure you're sitting down for this number because this, this one's outrageous. This one is, <laughs> this one's in, in, price of energy increased 41.6% in one year. In freaking one year. The price of new vehicles increased 11.4%, according again to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Enormous deficit spending of $2.5 trillion just in fiscal year 2021 and the first eight months of fiscal year 2022 has meant more money chasing goods. Now, what do you think happened to this deficit spending? Well, you had the COVID-19 checks, you had Joe Biden sending money to Ukraine and just all sorts of other places. And we're going to get to freaking these grants getting sent out to some school systems for some anonymous LGBTQ stuff. That's our last story of the day. You're going to fall over in your seat when we go over that one. So the federal spending competes with households and driving up prices by bidding away resources for government projects. And you kind of been seeing this time and time again, where the government itself has been out competing and sometimes outpacing the private sector, which is never good because in some way, shape or form, you're having the taxpayers subsidize for certain things. And in other words, artificially inflating the economy, which tends to hurt the average American household and also the average American business person. So it's always bad with what the government's doing in terms of their projects, in terms of them trying to help the economy. It never works out. And what they want to do is actually just pump more money into the economy. And we'll get to that in just one moment here. Earlier this week, if you recall, the Biden administration braced for this dismal inflation news, but argued that the June price data is somewhat, quote, outdated due to the possible easing of inflationary pressures, especially through lower gas prices. Indeed, prices at the pump have, honestly, they've declined over the past several weeks after hitting a $5 per gallon early in June. As of Wednesday, the national average gas price was $4.63, according to AAA. Now, we don't know where those numbers are going to go. The Biden administration seems to think that it is going to drop by somewhere of 50 cents. And we have Yahoo Finance, specifically Rick Newman, commenting on this. He's a senior columnist for Yahoo Finance. And I want to go ahead and watch this clip together. 
Americans finally seeing some relief at the pump, and it could be some good news for the Biden administration too. Yahoo Finance, a senior columnist, Rick Newman is here on set with us to explain. And Rick, we've talked a number of times about how important gas prices are to voters. Clearly, this is a good news here for the Biden administration. Is it enough, though? Because that's a big question. Well, it depends what happens. So the news here is that uh, the Biden administration did a briefing today, and they, they are kind of predicting that gas prices are going to fall another 50 cents per gallon from where they are right now. So right now, about $4.65 a gallon. And they don't know anything that nobody else knows. All they're doing is looking at the wholesale price. There's a lag between the wholesale price and the retail price. But the wholesale price has been coming down. And that was before what happened today. I mean, oil price is down another 8% today. Yeah. Um, so that is going to bring, I mean, that's, that's great news for drivers. So I looked at WTI um, just before I walked out, $95. If, I don't know if it's going to stay there because the Russia war is a real problem that's going to, is pushing up uh, oil and gas prices. But if it stays there, um, we could see gas prices coming back close to $4 by, um, I don't know, August or the beginning of September. So how funny is that, that around the midterm election times, we're seeing gas prices just randomly falling? Now, there is some discrepancy here in terms if it really would fall or if it's going to rise, because obviously you do have Putin. You have China that's going to try to make a rebound in the global market here as well by upping their manufacturing and their production, which they're going to be siphoning gas away as well. So you could see the price hike increase from that. Furthermore, we've talked a lot and so has JP Morgan in terms of what happens if Putin were to stop producing 5 million barrels of oil per day, for example, that could increase our $95 or $100 per barrel, depending on what time you're looking at, to $380 roughly per barrel, which we would see national average from AAA probably be anywhere from 15 to 16. I think AAA's realistic quota was $10 per gallon average. If that were to happen, I think that's a little bit low. So that's what we're looking at here. There's a lot of ways this can go. And it's always interesting how even he's echoing Putin's price hike. Because if you recall, the gas prices for everything before Putin ever took office increased a couple dollars. I think it was $2.40 or something like that before uh, Putin ever invaded. I think it was February 24th if I recall, where gas prices rose 200 or 200, $2.40 per gallon. And I think the average was like 350 or something. And then Ted Cruz came out and said, oh, that's about a 45% increase in basically energy cost for fuel prices. And that had nothing to do with Putin. And then you had Jen Psaki, Karine Jean-Pierre, they couldn't, they couldn't say anything about it because they want to blame everything on Putin. And so when they started bringing that up in terms of Putin, then they started blaming the oil companies. And then once they were done blaming the oil companies with them coming out going, well, guys, we can't produce anything more. We're literally at max capacity. We've actually produced more than we ever have at this point. And you're telling us to refine more. You're telling us to pump more oil. What the hell do you want from us, especially with all these regulations? Here's a list of things to do so that we can produce more oil. But you guys don't want to do it. But you're going to continue to blame us. So once they were done with that war with them, they moved on to the gas stations. The problem is, is that war is going to end really soon because a lot of people are pointing out, just as we have done here in the Bald Brad show, where the profits with these gas stations are literally pennies. I mean, they were getting, they were literally getting upset. And by they, I mean the, the Biden administration, because there was a 60 cent difference between the retail price of gas and what crude oil was selling for. Without ever acknowledging the fact that the government shut down all private businesses and businesses across the United States and heck on even a global level from different governments as well, that these oil industry workers, companies lost billions of dollars in profits, just had exorbitant amount of losses. And so they're trying to make up for that. Furthermore, there's talks of us going into a recession, so you wouldn't exactly want to see those prices lower because you want to be able to compensate for that potential loss that you might have in the future. Furthermore, you have Biden's own health aides, their own secretary of health coming out and saying, hey, we might be having another COVID-19 outbreak this fall, just trying to prepare for exactly around November, the midterm elections. All this stuff is taking place. I find it a little bit odd. And yes, it's a little bit of a conspiracy that there's a potential of seeing gas prices come down pretty dramatically by the time November election comes around, as well as an outbreak of another COVID-19 variant. It's just a little suspicious to me that they're already starting to preemptively talk about this just a couple months out. So there you have it. You have that taking place. 
uh, regarding inflation. I want to make sure I give you guys the most recent numbers. I hope you enjoyed that clip from the Bald Brad Show. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all our future content.